It's not a regular investigation that, oh, okay, they broke social houses. Mm -mm. It's a case of the reporter became the story. And how many years down the line? I'm still living with the trauma. Incidents in Olutore are similar to what happened to Tabore. And this is why she was given credit and why Premiums Times was given credit. However, Ulutore could never be Tobore's life story, as she has claimed. Indeed, so many women from around the world are trafficked to Italy, have similar stories. As long as you know that this is not the real you and you are only undercover. Get one woman with a car people go Europe. was shown to me before they ran to Netflix, running to Netflix without even my knowledge, eh? shaving my hair while I was asleep. These are not mere allegations, no. I know the weight of mere allegations. So for me to live my quiet life, to they drag somebody, may you know, say, man, the person shit for church. I recall it was May, May 29th, yeah, 2019, that the executive producer of the movie called me. I said, that time, I didn't even know they had even done screening of the film, May 27th. How moral is that? How professional is that? They make a film of my life story without first getting in touch with me to seek my permission first how proper is that how ethical is that how as in how ethical is that kenneth Giang, as of 2016 i had contacted the same kenneth wanting him to direct the same story people are not aware of this Ulutore was made by a team of over a hundred people, including researchers, writers, producers, our director, editors, actors, and crew. NAPTIP, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, supported us with research locations and vehicles. One of our producers, James Amuta, had recently made an award-winning documentary called Night Fall in Lagos, which was all about prostitution. We brought him in on this project because of his experience. What Tobori experienced is what hundreds of thousands of women and girls experience around the world. The stats on human trafficking are horrendous, and we made this movie to shed light on this horrid trade. Tobori went on social media making accusations, then she wrote to Netflix making demands, then she launched an attack against Kenneth Ingyang. I feel particularly bad for Kenneth because he had never seen the script until we approached him to direct the film. He's such a passionate filmmaker, but he's had to deal with daily and weekly harassment from Tobore. Then on the 4th of November, 2020, a month after the movie was launched on Netflix, we got a letter from Tobore's lawyers accusing us of copyright infringement and demanding $5 million in compensation.